Oh, right. I think sweet. All right. All right. Let sir. me know when. Good evening guys, welcome back to your WCG Chinese qualifiers. This is the best of three between DK and Tongfu in the semi-finals. The winner of this qualifies for the grand finals later this year in December in China. And right now DK are up game num game one. And we're gonna see if Tongfu can come back, take game number two. Joining me this time around is the illustrious Pain at Gold. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Yeah. Just great. That's great. Excited I just watched some Chinese Dota. I I, it's it's amazing that it's always like the Americans who are up at this time, and the Americans who all love to watch the Chinese Dota. It seems none of the Europeans actually put much time into watching these games. Yeah, I mean, I just like to watch them because like, it's so much nicer to find teams that are like consistent and they they're like forced to stick together and just stable rosters overall. Yeah, it's... and I th I think just the staying in that same living spaces and having you sort of forced to either get along with your teammates or make it make make yourself get along with them because you're living with them day in day out and you have to do other social stuff with them as well yeah yep um but anyways game number two here uh, dk they're playing on that die side and they're looking to run something very similar to game number one they've once again picked up the templar assassin right off the bat this time bounty hunter sneaks his way through gets first picked by tong fu but they picked up an undying here the european teams seem to be banning out the chinese teams haven't been picking him up this early on normally he cops maybe a ban in the second round but dk have suddenly started picking him up more regularly and running him as an offlane solo for rotk last game yeah uh undying as an offlane solo has actually picked up like big momentum he's actually quite good at it too because if he faces two heroes and he builds up the decay strength He's pretty hard to like manage, as well as like at level three. If he somehow gets level three up, then he is like level two zombie house. So uh, the level two zombie house makes him really hard to go on. Like if yep. they try to go on him and he throws it up, there's no way they're gonna kill him unless he's like really low. Yeah, with I the, saw that you, in with, uh, the Navi game. Yeah, with the decay, you kind of have your only option is really to have the burst damage to bring him down. If you start stacking decay in a long drawn out clash, it's just, it's bad news, and that's kind of what happened. I, I'd say with that duel, they ran a duel in with an Omni Knight, and there was just no damage. Omni Knight, Queen of Pain, couldn't do anything. He actually got first blood on the Queen of Pain, I didn't, I don't know how, but he somehow did. <laughs> it, it, as yeah, an offlane undying. A lot of people underestimate how much damage Decay does. It saps your strength as well as deals a good amount of damage with low cooldown. So yeah, you really have to get used to playing against it, for sure. Yep. Uh, Tongfu picked themselves up a Shadow Shaman DK, so they actually take two of the heroes that uh, DK used last game, that being the Dragon Knight as well as the Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman most commonly played as a support role in that safe lane, using a lot of those pools, and Dragon Knight a hero that Burning played well last game, so we'll see where he wants to go with this. And Dragon Knight I like because he can play in that mid lane, or he can also play in that safe lane. Yeah. And I'm really surprised that uh, Tongfu actually took Bounty Hunter over CA first. I know a lot of t uh, Chinese teams favor uh, Templar Assassin over Bounty Hunter. I think, I think from the games I've watched, yeah. they have, because she's such strong mid and she has so much mid game power with her skill set. Yeah, it was it, 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 it was interesting seeing La the Navi vs Empire games last year. Like both games, Batrider vs TA at mid lane, and contrary to what people think, how Batrider just wins the matchup, it's actually TA with the refraction can kind of stay on par as far as last hits go, and I think people kind of uh, under, underestimate how powerful TA can be in that mid lane, even against a Batrider. Yeah, and we even saw a TA in that case. Uh, I remember watching those games, and Dendi, he bought his boots first before Bottle, and Scandal couldn't do anything because he went the Bottle first, so like even with three st stacks of Sticky, uh, he couldn't go on the TA at all, just because the TA was faster. Yep, and uh, with these last couple picks here, DK, I'm wondering if they run the Undying as an offlane hero. I think that I think that's what Tongfu are expecting. They're banning out some of these these burning heroes. They ban out the anti the Lone Druid. I think the problem with this is that Burning hasn't been playing much of these hard carries lately. He's been playing a lot of Sven, a lot of Slada, playing these sort of tankier, more more yeah. durable initiate type of heroes. And DK have really changed their playstyle since the international. Oh yeah, they have big time. Uh, it's a big improvement, in my opinion. I didn't really like watching DK on much of the international. I did watch the other Chinese teams, and I was I like their play. 
But DK, I didn't really like that much. It felt weak, and it, it didn't feel like it was up to the metagame, you know? But since then, they're definitely on par. Like, they, they've they been early pushing aggression, not dodging fights, not relying on burning entirely, you know? Yeah, burning, so. it, 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 when they do, I'd say they it's still burning getting very involved, but he's not... He's more. He's spending more time farming heroes than he is farming creeps now. He'll come to the fights pretty oh, yeah. early on, and uh, I think another. And I don't think a lot of that comes down to Keeper of the Light being much more relevant as well. Just the ability for Keeper of the Light to bring heroes in in those mid-game team fights with Recall. So Burning can be off farming a lane by himself, like last game with the Dragonite, and then Keeper of the Light just says, "Okay, let's bring him in. Team fight's about to break out, or they're just about to get to a tower where they will need him to provide that extra burst damage." So. It's it's a much more sort of mobile. You can make the hero become much more mobile as whether it's a Sven, a Slada, Dragonite, some kind of carry for him, and he can get a lot more involved. So, going for those cost effects, and Super at the mid lane's been playing a much more sort of carry oh, type ish yeah. role with the TA with Queen of Pains. He's been more sort of the the one position, even though he's not in that safe lane. Yeah, he's been playing great. He was a recent pickup, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. Pretty sure he but he's oh, the super home X. No, no, Super right. Super is always been... He played with DK at the International, but he was mostly playing heroes like Invoker, um, even sometimes women. He was playing their solo mid, but oh, playing much more the, the passive right. roles. Yeah, I remember his Invoker now that you mention it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but sort of sticking sticking to a more passive style of play, but now he's playing more aggressive. He's having a much greater impact on the game. And International, it was like full Protect 1. It was just about get Burning as farmed as possible, get him as much, mm -hmm. as much farm as they can. But here with... With their new playstyle, I think Super is really getting to a, a greater chance to shine. ROTK in the offlane has been playing really well as uh, lately as well. I think yeah. TI2 for DK, he was he was the reason I think they couldn't get better than that fourth place because he was just not solid enough in that offlane. Yeah, yeah, Super has definitely been standing out a lot to me as a professional player uh, since international. Yep. Uh, Tongfu picked themselves up an Enigma here, so probably see jungle Enigma and go for that Shadow Shaman DK maybe as a dual lane. Look to try... I, I, once again though, I feel this, this it like, makes it so easy for DK to run Undying as a Suicide Solo when there, there's going to be a dual lane at that bottom lane. Shadow Shaman DK can't really push him out of the lane. Wow. Ooh. Death Prophet. I, I, I don't think this is something I've ever seen a Chinese team do as of late. Tongfu pick up a Death Prophet as... I imagine they're solo mid hero. Yeah, that's their lanes are set. Uh, Tongfu's definitely set. They have the Prophet mid. They have the safe lane Dragon Knight Shadow Shaman, the Enigma jungle, the Bounty Hunter off lane. But that being said, it's a lot of push potential, and it's something to take DK out of their element. Like I don't think DK knows how to respond to something like this uh, because you don't often see this in Chinese Dota, you know. Yeah, this is a really strong mid-game force with the the Death Prophet Dragon. I, I think it's just almost what kind of similar kind of play that we saw DK doing last game, where come mid-game they can just group up and push down towers. And sure, you've got an Undying to maybe defend with, but they've got the ability to take down the Zombie House using the Dragon Knight, using the Death Prophet Ultimate. They've got a lot of lot of physical damage, so Life Seal is going to be the answer there. That's Burning's hero, not going to be the Slada Sven, but it's something which does fill a similar role. Yeah, it could be quite deadly uh, having a Nakes inside the Templar Assassin mid-game after the Blink Dagger. And then that way Nakes wouldn't have to have any trouble getting in. They just blow up whoever hero they go on pretty much with a meld and explode from Nakes. I don't actually know what the <laughs> ultimate is called. Infest, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. It's a great way of dealing with Death Prophet, who if you can get to Death Prophet and just burst her down instantly probably see some Ghost Scepters coming out very fast on most of these Tongfu heroes apart from the, the frontline Bounty Hunter, the Dragon Knight as well. How with the Dragon... That's a hero I think he's really comfortable playing. That and his anti major probably his two best heroes. And I think Hao hasn't been playing as well as he as he has in the past as of late. Uh, Tongfu have just not really... had been a bit out of sorts here, but we'll see what they can do against DK. They, this is a must-win must win game for them. And it is going to be Hao playing the Dragon Knight. Yep. How is the one with the killer shades, right? Yeah, killer shades, some some pimpin' hair, and he's yeah. All right, I thought so. He's kind of like the 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 pie cat of China. Yeah, he really is. As far as as far as style goes, and just having some some good swag. Yeah. And uh, Tongfu, they they're all heading down towards the bottom lane. Maybe he's going to meet DK. We've got Hao playing the Dragon Knight, Veronica on Bounty Hunter, Long DD playing Enigma, Sansheng on the Shadow Shaman, and then Mu playing that Death Prophet. Here we go. DK going to be running right into them, burning at the front lines. He's got this Stout Shield. Veronica scouts that with a 
Nice time shadow walk. So Tongfu know this is coming. It looks like they don't want to fight though. Enigma can't really offer much. They're actually going to have Burning Run right in. He finds Sanchen though. He's overstayed his welcome. TK, Kung Fu Panda, ROTK misses the stun though. And now Tongfu coming in from behind. QQQ hits a Gale on a couple. And first blood actually goes to the Bounty Hunter. It's on to the Less Track. One for one trade so far. Mu has a lot of heroes around him. He's running for his dear life. Couple more right clicks coming from Venomata, coming from Super. Super gets another kill for DK. Two for one trade. But first blood did go to Tongfu. So a small win. For Tong Fu. Oh my gosh, oh, they're actually going to go dive on. a tier 1 tower. They have they have a lot of balls, this DK team. They're going to get two, going two more kills. <laughs> Five men diving a tier 1 tower. This is Chinese Dota for you. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I don't think even Europeans well. do that. Like I watch, I've watch, i watched in, in Moscow 5 like dive towers and do all kinds of crazy stuff, but I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> It's because Veronica backed up so much, and they knew that he backed up so much. Like, Veronica started running to his lane, and uh, they saw him, like, back up that much, so they were like, yeah, we can do this. Like, yeah. only these two heroes? Yeah, let's Simple. do this. So, I'm, I mean, Undying just kept stealing street. You've got Super, who has Refraction. He can tank the tower a bit. I mean, Bernie's got a stout shield. They've got so much ability to just tank those towers and dive early on, and... They're staying yeah. with this offensive trial line as well, so it's actually MMY. We can see Die playing the Undying, it's not ROTK on him. Burning playing the, the life the life stealer. Venomancer playing by 357, QQQ Super, as expected on the TA, already has his bottle up with that one fight and a safe playing solo Leshrac, so Leshrac versus Bounty Hunter. This is something a bit different here coming from DK as well as Tong Fu. Yeah, I really like uh, DK's lanes, but before that I just wanted to point out that Long DD, he actually got stunned at level one, so he had to Go oh. mid for his level two to get Eidolons. That's going to slow him down a lot. A bit, yeah. a bit back. He's got his level but, two uh, now, but it still it still slows you down a bit. And DK at this bottom lane is just gonna, not going to get how give how any farm at all. Yeah, I'm really impressed by DK's laning here, uh, laning choice, because uh, once they picked Enigma, and they already had Shadow Shaman, so they had like the weak support in lane, so. They knew they could pretty much roll over the lane with an Enigma in the jungle, a Shadow Shaman support, and a DK in the safe lane. So that if they didn't aggressive try lane, then they would just be giving DK free farm, Enigma free farm, and Shadow Shaman free pulling levels. But instead, they're going to contest the lane, and uh, they're going to give Nakes free farm. DK isn't going to get any farm. Enigma is going to get farm, but Shadow Shaman isn't going to get his level 6 nearly as quick. So it was a really great choice from... DK to challenge this, as yeah, they can go oh, and they're oh diving gosh. on Sen Sen Sheng right now. I can't pr pronounce the Chinese names as well as you. That's right. Well, it looks like Sen Sheng. He, he does not stand a chance. He's been what? He's going to shackle this up. Burning gets himself a bit blocked here. And how? The problem is he's trapped in here as well. Through <laughs> QQQ just body blocking him in. QQQ may pay for this with his life. He will, but hey, yeah, gets, gets the play. kill. I, the DK set up, they're basically winning all three lanes. <laughs> TA beats Death Prophet mid. They've got this trial lane at bottom that's winning. And Lashrak with early sentry wards is pushing Bounty Hunter out of the lane. The only good news for Tong Fu is that they've got this Enigma farming in the jungle. Yeah, actually, D DP is actually a fantastic choice against TA mid. And she's actually doing better than TA mid right now. And you know why DP is a fantastic choice? It's because she can spam consistently with her nuke and just bottle, bottle, crow, get the runes. Uh, that's what you need to face a hero like uh, Templar Assassin mid. You can't have someone who can test with right click. You need someone who just spams the waves and get the creeps that way. And then just bottle crows. Like a panda, like a death prophet, like a windrunner even does well. If you have someone in a like right click battle, yeah. like an invoker, then it doesn't ever do well against TA. So this was a great pick from... Tongfu. Yeah, it really makes sense. I, th the end result is they're pretty much just trading farm, but Death Prophet has much gr greater control over the runes with the spam, but uh, the problem is Tongfu, their other lanes, is not working out too well with the top lane. Bounty Hunter's being completely pushed out of the lane with these early sentry wards. Kung Fu, Panda, ROTK al almost doubling his farm already, and this trial line at bottom, they're looking for more kills, they're looking to keep getting aggressive, and they don't even need to block this pool. Venomance are using his Plague Wards just to block it from respawning every every minute. Yeah. Like, trading farm for in mid is against a TA is actually a really good situation. Yep. Because, like, often TA just dominates the lane in CS and runes and everything. And XP as well. So if you're getting XP and gold, that's fantastic. And uh, bottom lane, the trial. They haven't found too many kills lately, but that's just how playing so far back. He's gone for some early boots here. And I, I think Tong Fu, they've, it's almost better that 
the DK is not pushing this in because DK, as soon as the creep gets the tower, they may look for another dive here. Sanchenk's actually caught up underneath this tower and burning. Ooh, he's not going to find. They're not going to no, notice that Sanchenk's underneath the tower. They're looking to dive past get how. And they're just going to creep skip here. With this creep skill, they can just chip away at this tower and slowly, bit by bit, take this out. Yeah. If they spot Sanchenk, he's, he's probably dead. He's just frightened right now for his life. <laughs> but I'd like to point out that uh, DK MMY, the Undying build, actually is not that good. You can, I don't think he has much experience with Undying because this is not the ideal, ideal build for a, an aggressive tri lane Undying. Yep. Um, Soul Rip, it, it's good. It's it's a great skill, but not early on. DK, if you max it, it has a four second cooldown and it steals 160 as well as four strength. It deals 160 damage and four strength. Four strength is uh, 80 health, so it, it's effectively a 220 damage AOE nuke every four seconds for 70 mana. So overall, that's pretty insane. And that's why uh, in European and uh, American Dota, especially what we're seeing from them lately is uh, max decay. And it's just so much power early, especially in aggressive tri lanes, especially in early and mid game fights. And then you see the Tombstone max next. And, and most people skip their ultimate at six and even skip Soul Rip until level nine, I think it is. Oh, wow. So I, I think DK is uh, trying, maybe they're just playing it how they've always played it, but I don't think this is the optimal build for Undying. I, I don't agree with it. Yeah. Just think... because DK is so powerful. I've never seen the, getting a second point in Soul Rip, but I've seen. Undying's go for one in Decay, one in Soul Rip, and then Max Tombstone first by Chinese players as well as some of the Southeast Asian players. But this is not what I'd expect from an Undying. And like you say, the, the Decay just so powerful with that four second cooldown. Soul Rip, I, it's got yeah twenty second cooldown at level two. Getting that second point doesn't really offer him all that much. Yeah, the duration of the strength steal is also goes up by fifteen seconds when Decay is max. I didn't notice that until I just checked it. But yeah, fifteen seconds for. Uh, like sapping strength is a big deal as well. Really yep. lets you stack it up, become more tanky, take away the strength from the other heroes for longer. It's only beneficial. Well, for Tong Fu, once well, Bounty Hunter's about to hit level six, does he maybe look to come help out this bottom lane, even maybe the the mid lane get a kill on Templar Assassin? Or how do you how do you react to this if you're Tong Fu? They've actually sent DK top. I, I don't know if he's going for a gank here. Maybe we see them look to try to get a kill on Leshrak. Leshrak, one of the easier heroes on the map for them to actually get kills on. And with that Janata slow, maybe that helps set up a stun for Hal. Mm. Yeah, they're definitely... Uh, Tongfu is in a bad situation, and they realize it right now. Um, I've been in this situation quite a few times as a player, and it's never good. Basically, they had to abandon their safe lane because the other lane is just overpoweringly strong. So what they have to do is just keep uh, uh, switching it back and forth until they have to keep switching how to the lane where the heroes aren't and dodging pretty much all fighting with how and even the Rasta who is Sancheng, they have to just dodge fights, get their alts up and then hope to take good fights uh, when they can. Yeah. And they're gonna give up the tower and then that'll give them comp uh, DK complete control over the Radiant jungle which is really bad for uh, Tongfu. I don't, there's nothing and, really uh, Tongfu can do here. I mean, Mu on the mid lane is a death problem. Mu's actually going to get engaged, and they get the kill at top lane on Lashrak, but it's mid lane where Super's going to find himself a solo kill on Mu. Shackle not going to be in in time. Sancheng does come with a Shackle. Can Super gather this? He's going to have Refract back up in just a second now. He could even try to turn this around on Sancheng. He's going to make a run for it. Long DD's there waiting for him on the high ground. Super just going to scurry back to mid lane, so... Kill on top lane, they do get the Lashrak, and how, like you suggest, just needs to avoid clashing with that trial and end. Well... RTK TP's back top, but they've got himself a kill. Mm -hmm. And Long DD. This is a bit of a grudge match too, huh? Because Long DD is playing for Tong Fu oh, yeah. against his X team. Yeah, no, very true. I, I'm not sure exactly how, how those T teams left, but yeah, Long DD playing against his old team DK. And I mean, as far as from what I from what read in the news is that he didn't even realize. He just suddenly got told, like, oh, you're not on the team anymore. You've been kicked, so... Yeah, he, he'd that's love, what I read he'd as love, well. He'd love to win this matchup, I'm sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I I had the same situation where Boba and Universe left our team, and it was always so competitive. And Moo gets gone on by Undying and Templar and Venomancer mid. He's not looking good. Yeah, they're going to try to turn this around. Long DD's there as well. Caught in this tombstone. He can't really get away from this. Meanwhile, top lane, they do get a kill on Lestrak again. RTK goes down. MMY, he's not done chasing in. 
as they get another kill. Just the one point in DK, the really long cooldown. You like you say, it's maybe not the most e efficient build, but still Undying, just at his raw power still being shown. He's just so good at playing aggressive, and DK can look to pick up another tower on the back of this here. This T1 mid tower taking yeah. a lot of damage at mid. QQQ also made a nice cutesy play there. If you saw the plague ward that he put in front of Long DD, it really blocked his path. So he had to go uh, yeah. left out the path uh, and near the tower instead of running down where he would have had a higher chance to live. Oh, here we go. Veronica's TP in. Veronica actually level 8 has actually had a decent start here. They're going to try to contest this T1 tower. Deny does come. Lou gets that. And now Veronica on the run. There's a central ward down. Can Veronica get out the trap gold? Goes down, but not enough movement's been coming. This slow is just being chained together. Once you get caught out, there's just no running from the traps, from the Venomanta Gale, from the open wounds, from the lifesteal, and they're going to look to push on in. They, this is just seven yeah. minutes in, and this this death ball army from DK is just too much for Tonkwi to handle. Bounty hunting can't really come and help help out. I feel. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're not done. How gonna find himself getting jumped on? Long DD's here. Big black hole catches five. What a black hole! Moves there with the spam on top of it, but there's not enough damage. Maybe Moo pops the ult, but he's taken out one. Gets Templar Assassin as well. Moo finally finding him. He gets a third. Wow, what a play! Die is on the run now. Couple more right clicks coming. Is it gonna happen? Moo needs another carry and swamp DK. MMY not gonna get caught out. He does the oh. Death Prophet ultimate. That is that is some long range ghost action happening there. Four kills going the way of Tong Fu. What a play God, from Long I'll DD. Be honest, like watching as an observer, I didn't even see that ultimate coming from Long DD. It was so good. <laughs> I he, he he came. He was in the he was like in the jungle, like off farming some neutrals while they while DK are just diving past the T2 tower, going for the T3, and somehow in the right place at the right time and. I don't know. Right? Yeah, that's big. It gave a lot of levels back to Tong Fu and they needed it. Kills as well. And uh, it's a bit of an overplay from DK. Yep. But uh, it's sad that Hao died because he really needs levels. But that's the kind of plays that Tong Fu needs to be making to come back in the game. And those slip ups by DK, they also need them. It's always nice. And we're going to see a gank on top with Veronica and Hao. Yeah, how's actually the lowest level in this game for Tong Fu? Their supports are sort of getting level six levels, and they find they find ROTK and they chain stun him down. This is this is more kills going the way of Tong Fu. They're almost getting leveling up as far as kills go. This mid lane where DK also going to find Super getting caught out. He didn't manage to get away from that. If he goes down as well, it's a big, big pickup for Tong Fu. But I, the, every little pickup that Tong Fu are getting, I mean, they're getting track gold at top lane as well for that. This is really helping them stay in this game. Yeah, they need to keep doing this and just avoiding five man death ball fights. Unless it's at your tier two tower and even then like it's really hard to fight DK. Yeah, DK. With their heroes. It's I feel that just DK are playing a bit sloppy, making a few mistakes. They they go a bit too over aggressive at mid lane and then just a couple pick offs here and there. They're gonna look to try get one of their own on how this top lane. How he's got that level seven now, he's got the ultimate form up, but that's not gonna be able to keep him alive without some backup. Sancheng's there, Serpent Wards are dropped, but undying, MMY gets the kill and possibly Sancheng gonna drop as well. He's trying to turn things around, but there's just not enough damage. He's got nothing to throw and Tong Fu. They find some kills going their way, but they throw away any Anything they get, they just seem to have thrown it away with pickoffs like that, and they're going to lose towers on the back of that as well. Yeah. That was a pretty big misplay from how I have to say. Because if you look at DK's lineup, they actually have a ton of slows, but how many stuns do they have? Only Leshrac. So, as long as Leshrac's not there and you're full health and you're getting chased down, you should be able to live if you TP it away. And he, he would have lived for sure if he TP it away there. Yeah, Tong Fu though, they're going to try counter push at the mid lane, they've got Mu there, Mu with a, bu a bunch of gold having won that last fight, he's now going to get a T1 tower at mid, and DK trying to take it to Tong Fu, it looks like they're not going to be able to find those pickoffs, even with all those slows of theirs, they've got a couple here at the top lane, Burning just pushing away farming, he's got his armlet up now in the top lane, and well, DK, they give up a T1 tower, but they're still, they, they just got such great a map control at the moment, I feel, having the ability to play so aggressive, pushing out these lanes. Oh, oh no. Now, Another How gets gone on top by burning QQQ and just gets eaten again. Burning is just so far with that armlet. It yeah, does so much damage. How is struggling. At this point, if you're DK, I don't even know. What what do you get? What do you try to do? I mean, you mentioned he just has to swap lanes and avoid heroes, but he's getting killed by just... It only takes two heroes to kill him. Oh, and Burning's not done. He's going to find try and find Sanching. His Sanching runs in the jungle. He's going to be the sacrificial lamb for Tongfu while they try back up. Maybe see some tracks get dropped by Veronica and immediately retreating, but... For, for Tong Fu, for DK, what what can he actually do here? He just needed to avoid that lane entirely, honestly. 
Yep, and uh, now just DK can... Just avoid hero as best you can. Yeah, it, it's really hard. There's just so many ways that they can... They don't even need to bring the whole team. It's just one or two heroes used to kill them. And Tongfu now going to try and make a go at this. Still no Shadow Shaman up. I don't think they want to really fully engage onto this. Super has his Blink Dagger. You've got Lifesteal who can infest into Super. And, and you mentioned before, just the ability to completely drop down a hero instantly with the meld, meld with the slows, with the next bombs. Yeah, it's really important to note also that like when one team makes a misplay, such as DK did in mid with the huge black hole that they let Long DD have, uh, it doesn't often happen more than once a game because like the players they change their mindsets. They they're on guard against that hole. They're like, wow, like we just got wiped because we all got hold. Like we this can't happen again. So their mindsets change during the game, yeah. and uh, often like you don't get lucky twice when it comes to black holes like that. Uh, it's it's, it's some, you, often you'll go against without seeing a single one. Have, having hitting one, let alone a second five man black hole, would be very very unexpected. Yeah. Especially without a blink dagger and a BKB. Yeah. Yeah, that was just that was just walking on in, getting a big five man hole. He's gonna have a blink dagger soon mm -hmm. if he wants one. He's picked up this headdress, but he hasn't bought his mech yet, which he could, so I think we're gonna see that blink dagger coming from Long DD. I think for Tong Fu it's really their only way to maybe win a team fight is they have that huge black hole once again. But DK are gonna yeah. be ready for that. DK are gonna have an Aegis up and DK in general, I, I just feel like this next fight they're gonna be so much tankier, they're gonna have a mech up on the Undying soon. And even if they get a big black hole hitting three, maybe four heroes, it's still not gonna guarantee them that they win the fight. DK, Dragon Knight's not doing any follow-up damage, it's only Mu who's really backing up the black hole with any damage. Yeah. But Mu has he does do quite a bit of damage if he manages to survive. Crip Swarm, four second cooldown, three hundred damage, big AoE. So if he if he casts a couple of those three or four in a team fight, they're looking good. Yeah, and, but he's uh, he's not really tanking up. He decided to buy a Void Stone when he already has a bottle. Oh, here we go. Q -Q -Q. Q -Q -Q gets off the ultimate. Super's behind them. He's gonna try and maybe pick off some of these. Here. Actually, no, he runs for it. He knows Enigma's there. Enigma has that black hole, so Super does not want to take that fight. Uh, he ran in. I, I, I looked like Templar Assassin actually scattered them out with an invis room, but Q Q Q went. Running in does get off an ultimate, not doing a whole lot here, but DK, small, small, small loss for them. Nothing really that's going to change the tides yeah. of this game. That that situation was pretty tricky as QQQ. Like, uh, Super walked up the hill as Templar Assassin, and then once he got up the hill, there were pretty much four heroes there. And yep. QQQ was like, oh man, I'm so <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah, so not much he could do. I mean, hey, it's probably probably the biggest Venom ultimate you, you hit all game. It, it's one of those ultimates which is, is really hard to land as a support hero. You have to sort of be in the middle of things, so he yeah. actually hits a, a big four-man Venom ulti. So a small small victory for him, although the, Tong Fu just shrugged mm -hmm. it off. And I think DK, for now, they're playing really patient. Do they look to push soon? Are they just waiting for mayby this mech on, on MMY, or are they just happy to take play a more farm-oriented game now? Well, they... They got the Aegis, so they're going to be pushing within six minutes for sure. They got mid tower. Uh, Burning picked up his Maelstrom just now, so he has a Maelstrom armlet. He's pretty strong. Um, I don't see any dire need for them to push as of now. And I, I suppose they're waiting on mech for yeah. MMY. Long DD didn't go for the Blink Dagger. He decided to go back for that mech, so it's going to be hard for Tongfu to to get off those those big black holes. Even with a Blink Dagger, it can be hard. You've got Serpent Wards to scout things out. You've got Blink Daggers on the Templar Assassin to go sort of try to snipe off the Enigma. So it's it's hard for him regardless, but going for the more defensive option with this mech. Yeah, I really like the mech option because uh, these fights are long and drawn out. They don't really, they aren't really that much burst aside from like TA, Meld, Hit, and uh, just burning, doing so much damage when hitting someone with Rage and Armlet. But uh, other than that, they're pretty drawn out, and uh, I think he he's going to save a lot of people, hopefully, with that mech. Yeah. I mean, that's a goal of mech. <laughs> it helps against you TA as well. I mean, the plus armor against a TA can be really useful as well. Here we go. Tongfu Veronica does scout out the engagement. DK, I think, smoked up for this. Oh, Veronica does get dusted here. Veronica trying to make a run for this. May be the cost. They get the T1 tower by the looks of things. It actually gets fortified. Tongfu Veronica goes down. How's the T1 tower? It does drop, and now Tongfu... They're going to trade Bounty Hunter's life for that T1 tower. I think that's, that's about as good a trade as they're going to get Tongfu there, once Veronica gets caught out. I think, I mean, for yeah. Tongfu... And move forward to the bottom lane, and Burning immediately went on him. But long, he realized Long DD was also boarding the Enigma. Yep. So he backed up, but he did so much damage to Moon so fast. Well, DK now, they grouped up this top lane.
Burning's at mid, but yeah. I think they're going to just go for this top tier 2 tower. Yeah, they don't really have anything stopping them or holding them back. DP ultimate is down. And uh, it's just a good time to push. Yep, Long DD getting close to a Blink Dagger though. He's up to 1600 gold already, so as far as farm goes, he's, he's up there. He's, I mean, 1k ahead of the DK. DK has absolutely nothing at this point in the game. Trying to start to build that BKB, but DK going to look to get what appears to be an uncontested tower here, so one T2 tower remaining in the bottom lane, and DK find themselves pulling further and further ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> so Mu, Mu has a Yules picked up now, which is quite good for Tongfu. He needed a Yules. Uh, Yules were the items I was looking at for him, and also a Ghost Scepter, just to dodge all the physical damage that DK has. So you, but he has Yules. Yules is for, like, what, keeping himself alive and also the movement speed and stuff as well, or what's kind of what makes Yules a, a good item choice here for his first item? Uh, it's just keeping him alive uh, more than anything. Uh, yep. The cycloning yourself for 2.5 seconds means that if Nakes and TA blink on, in on you with Nakes inside of TA, that means you aren't going to die to that, and they're going to be wasting their initiate and time on trying to focus you down. So it makes you a really hard target. Like, if he didn't have it, they would just blink in on him with TA Nix and focus him down instantly. So instead, he said, like, you can't target me, I have a Yul's, basically. And yep. DK knows that. DK is fully aware that they can't uh, burst him down. Yeah, they probably just... Because he has the Yul's. They try, they try to keep picking off this Bounty Hunter, who Bounty Hunter plays too aggressive, maybe even Long DD. Tong Fu, they're going to smoke up now. I, I don't know if this is the right time to go for some smoke. Oh, maybe if they Long can DD find a Lone Hero. Blink Dagger. Ooh, Blink Dagger. This is, so they want to make something happen with this, and the, they don't want a big team fight here, I feel. They, the Age is still up on Super. They want to try to find a little pick-off. Burning is at that top lane, and they're going to oh, be ward. soon walking into him. Yeah. San Chang just placed a ward mid. I think it caught Vision of Undying. But it looks like they just want to get a kill off on Burning. Much needed. He yep. so farmed. They know he's there now. They're going to have to use a black hole for this, I want to say. Uh, they're going to have to throw a lot at him. They've only got three heroes here. This is not going to be an easy kill for them. There you go. Tong Fu Long DD goes in. Black hole going to have to be popped for this. He does do so. Yeah. Burning. Well, well, that's worth it. I mean, I don't think we're going to see a black hole going to be near anytime no! soon. But can they even no! get the kill? He goes Sancheng! into a creep. Sancheng missed. No! Did he miss the hex? Miss the shackle? Yes, he hexed a creep, then shackled oh. the different creep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sancheng. And black hole was used for that. Yeah. DK is definitely going to do something now that Black Hole is down. That was a lot of resources wasted oh, for, San, no. for Tong Fu, and they all realize that San Chang is just shooting himself in the foot right now. He is not happy with his play. Those clumsy fingers. I don't know. Yeah. You've... He had time, too. Yeah. He rushed it. He rushed it too much. He, he could have hex on top of the... I mean, just like the right as Black Hole's about to wear off. I mean, it, the rage had worn off by then, I want to say. Yeah, he had a second left. I checked the black hole to make sure that he had ample time, or how close it was. Here we go, oh, they found Super Ow. in the jungle here. How's going to be the one who gets caught on, though. MMY is going in. There's no escape here by the looks of things, except for TP out, oh. so How does get away. Smart it's from him. It's the Yeah, yeah like you mentioned, Leshrek the only stun here, but the problem is the rest of Tongfu may get caught out instead. Yule Scepter used on Templar Assassin. Offensive Yule Scepter as well, a very a useful way of saving your teammates. Almost like a more, in some ways, an alternative to full stuff, and it also gives you the movement speed. So, Mu making great use of this Yule Scepter, and DK just going to try to go for the tier 2 tower, but it looks like they can't get too many kills. Tongfu proven to be much more durable now that they've picked up a, new, a few couple of, couple of items. Yeah, and that's just the power of a TP. I mean, he must feel kind of silly realizing, like, kind of this late into the game, like, oh, like, I can just TP away to any lane as long as Leshrac is there. As yeah. long as I do it in advance. And you know. DK, they're, they're kind of struggling a bit to take down these towers now. I mean, Tongfu stalling them pretty well here, just pushing them back. They've got the spam from the Carrion Swarm, the DK Flame Breath. And DK, with these sort of heroes like Lifestealer and Templar Assassin, they're not really the best heroes to just be in the front lines pushing away the tower, being melee. They need the Leshrac Edict to do the damage, but they can't really go in that easily. And no, no more Aegis as well. Oh, here we oh, go. Burning. Burning's gone Aegis. in. The Serpent Wards get dropped immediately. Burning, he's confident though. He's got this armor. He's got this six second rage as well. How's the first target? He's still alive though. The mech keeping everybody alive. Sanjin gets a shackle off. Burning though heals himself up. He infests inside. It's already Bounty Hunter dropped and they're going to get How as well. How just does not have the items to sustain himself. Super. 
gets himself a kill, undying MMY with the mech up, keeping his team alive much like the Enigma mech, and now they're going to turn around, they're looking for QQQ, looking for 357, Death Prophet doing a lot of damage with this ultimate, QQQ goes down as well, Death Prophet picks up a triple kill I believe, no just two, Shadow Shaman stole one, and Tongfu they hold, and this is, I mean they don't kill the yeah. Lifestealer off, but hey, they get some key heroes, the only bad news is once again DK goes down, that's kind of been the story of this game, how, this game, how dies, but Tongfu somehow hold. Yeah. Um, MMY on his undying heal burning for so much with just the soul rip and the mech. It was like a 400, 500 heal, or else it would have took burning down, and that's the power of undying. And uh, yeah, Shadow Shaman Wards actually took down two heroes when they were retreat retreating back from the fight. MMY and Super. Well, that's, I mean, I think DK just getting a bit too aggressive. I mean, they're definitely getting too aggressive there. I mean, Burning goes charging in. He's not really killable, but once the support heroes follow up, they they can't hold themselves alive. ROTK's finished off with yeah. Bloodstone, but it's, I, don't, I just feel the other heroes, the backup heroes, don't quite have the same ability to dive as the Lifestealer does. Super just, he's got a BKB up now, but he, he gets punished when he plays too aggressive like that. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking cryptically about Tong Fu, but I definitely see comeback potential in this, because yeah. DK doesn't really have heroes for pushing in the base against Tong Fu. Well, like, Tong Fu has a strong defense lineup. That fight was without a BKB, though. Super now just buys the BKB after respawning, so maybe if he had that BKB there, it's a different fight, I feel. Yeah, but also, at the same time, uh, Enigma didn't have Black Hole, yeah. which he has now. And also, like, the DP physical ghosts are creating havoc in team fights like that. And uh, the way that DK is going to have to fight as long as Tong Fu doesn't fight outside their base is it's going to be an inside the base fight. Yep, DP's so it's level be 14 with a soul booster. This is a lot of farm on move. This is kind of what, I mean, Dragon Knight has just been struggling. He buy, he's buy, picks up a sand, so we're not even going to see him go for the BKB. He's going for the Heaven's Halberd. And Moo's just got a ridiculous amount of farm. Well, I don't know. DK, they find another Aegis. Which once again goes no, it doesn't go to super. It, does, it goes to the life cell. It goes to Burning, who's on those front lines. So it looks like they want it to be on him. And we'll see if this maybe works for DK with the Aegis, with the BKB on Templar Assassin. Maybe this next fight will go slightly more to their advantage. The one worry for me is going to be that black hole still, though. Yeah. A lot of it's going to come up to the initiation of the fights. Like DK, they kind of just ran in last time, tried to bypass. Uh, Shadow Shaman's Wards, DP Ultimate, and uh, just take a hero down, but they can't. And also with the track movement speed, it's, it's a lot of good. And it's really oh, hard. Veronica. Oh, oh no. Caught out again at this top lane. A, a great start for Veronica as far as the laning stage went, getting a couple kills on the track, but this is a really tough game to be a bounty hunter against these DK heroes in this playstyle that Tongfu being forced into. They're not really using bounty hunter to try to set up kills around the map. He's been really shut out of this game, but for me, I'm, I'm curious as to how the Death Prophet will match up against some of these heroes, some of those, those those melee ish heroes, the, the life stealer, the Templar Assassin, these are heroes who have to really get in close. And Templar Assassin, that kind of makes the Exorcism do a lot of damage, not to mention the movement speed from Yule Scepter. You mentioned the track movement speed a lot. This is a very mobile Death Prophet, so I, I feel Death Prophet can actually take this to late game and do pretty well against both Templar Assassin and the Lifestealer. Oh, yeah, Death Prophet's a great hero against pretty much all melee carries. Carries that need to get in there, and they just get killed by the ghost pretty much. So she's great. The problem is, uh, how needs. Actually, he's picked up his farm quite a bit. He has 1,500 gold and a stange, which is pretty good. Um, once he gets 16, it's going to help with kiting the melees on DK a lot. And yep. if they can reach that point, I mean, Tongfu has a pretty good chance of winning this game. And as far as the, the item choice for Howie, do you think going for this Heaven's Halberd over the BKB is going to help make him a lot harder to kill and help him in these team fights? Um... Yeah, the majority of DK's damage is actually coming from physical, so he's going to be getting the strength from the, the Sange and the, and the evasion from the Talisman of Evasion. So it's 25% dodge against uh, a Nax who's not going MKB and a TA who's also not going to have an MKB anytime soon. So it's going to be a great pickup just for survivability. They don't really have that much magic damage that he needs to worry about, so it's just pretty much... Um, he's going to be... 
stacked with armor, and then he's going to have the evasion on top, and he's actually going to be pretty hard to kill. And we see him pick up a Helm of Dominator right now instead of finishing his Heaven's Halberd, which I'm questioning because I don't think that was the right decision. Heaven's Halberd would do a lot for him here, I think. It will or it won't? Oh, it here would we go. Bottom if lane. he had it. Yeah, Super is... Oh, sorry, it's meant the Helm of the Dom. I think the Helm of the Dom. Super does manage to find the Enigma in the jungle here. It looks like, oh, TP out, Sanching does get away. And no, I definitely agree. Heaven's Halberd with the evasion is, is the way to sort of deal with a lot of these right click heroes. They haven't got the magic damage. That Venomance ultimate not really come into play at all. You've got Leshrac who, despite having a lot of farm, isn't really finding the, the openings to go into these fights. He's still fairly squishy even with the Bloodstone up because of the Ghost. If you run in to try to do the AoE damage with Pulse Nova, with Edict, you're just getting taking too much damage from Bounty Hunter as well as the Exorcism. So DK, they're going to make another go on this bottom tier 2 tower here. We'll have to see yeah. if Enigma I know that super, super has Burning inside him right now. Oh. Wow, MMY just taking so much damage. And this, that's, this support undying is just a bit too squishy. It does get earned up though, so we'll be ready to go in in just a second here. And they want to find that opening. Super. Looking to maybe blink in. Who's it going to be? I, you can't, you mentioned they can't, just can't get moved. He's got the Yule Scepter. He'll, he'll make them waste that. So it's going to be maybe Veronica, maybe even Hal. Hal has not got the Heaven's Halberd up and he is going to probably be the best hero for them to kill right off the bat if they can find him in a position where they can do that. Yeah, it shouldn't be Veronica. Veronica sh can't get initiated on it. He gets initiated on, they lose. If they go on Moo, Moo should survive. If they go on How, How should survive long enough for Tonk Free to prosper from the fight. So, the three heroes that can't get caught, no matter what, are Veronica, Long Didi, and San Shang. I just, else will lose. I just think they can't go in at all. Enigma's just positioned behind. Enigma's ready for a blink back hole. Here we go. Long DD. Does he catch the Leshrac? He doesn't. Leshrac Sun comes a bit too late though. He's already taken out Undying. QQQ 357 drops as well. Can DK turn this around? Life Stealer takes out Shadow Shaman chasing down Long DD. Stun comes. Burning cannot chase any further. Elsewhere it's Super getting stunned down by How and Mu just doing so much damage with that ultimate. They've completely turned this fight around. Sanchek actually buys back. He's that confident. They take out Burning once. He's going to respawn. Probably drop a second time. Has he got a TP or an Infest? He's got Infest, but he's just going to make a run for it. Tracked up. Tracked nice. gold going oh. away of Tong Fu. And Super may drop as well. Super's also tracked here. Can they get both? DK are getting punished for this. He can't get into the creep. He's trying to Infest. Doesn't manage to do so. Four heroes go down for Tong Fu. Just for a Shadow Shaman. What a huge team fight for them. And I, Enigma, Long D, you can see they just don't have the... I mean, Thanks. even the, with the Leshrac Sun being ready, it, it doesn't come instantly. It takes some time for yeah, ROTK to get in position. Second cast on. And that, that loses DK the fight when Undying and Venomancer, they lose their two supports only, but it's still, they just kite around the melee heroes. The Lifestealer, the Templar Assassin just don't have the damage and they just get kited around too easily. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much two seconds before they can get any stun on the Enigma pull right now, which is super advantageous. We haven't really talked about that since I was talking about uh, using yep. TP to get away because they don't have stuns, but they also don't have stuns to cancel Enigma's hole. Yeah, I mean, the BKB doesn't even seem like it's crucial at this point. He's gone for the mech first, he then even came back to get the finish off the string threads just to give him some more HP. Maybe he just goes for a Ghost Scepter now instead of a BKB to make him make him harder to get picked off in a fight. Could get another Yule Scepter. I feel he doesn't even necessarily need a BKB here. I don't think he needs one either. And Tongfu, Mu, he's at 11 bloodstone charges now. He is oh, wow. tanked up. He has all the mana in the world. 2.5k. He's doing well for himself. And he's just mid and he's playing cocky right now because he knows that they don't have the stun to take him down. Yeah, it's it's really hard to do. So. And with 2.7k gold, is this going to be hard of Taras? Maybe a sheep stick? What what do you need to get to deal with this DK lineup? To I mean, the comeback, I, it's, already, it's already rolling. I don't think he needs any more... Uh, tank items actually at all. I think he's perfectly fine on that front. I think increasing the damage output as well as the kite ability of the melee heroes is a much better choice, as well as increasing his armor. So yeah. I would be looking at a Shiva's. I think Shiva's undoubtedly is the best choice for Mu right now in this game. Yeah, the slow could, I mean, going through going through BKB, going through Rage makes it a lot easier to kite them around as well and just slow them down, keep up with them. How has gone back for his Heaven's Halberd though, so. Helm of the Dom, I, I don't know, it doesn't really offer him much. He hasn't even picked up a creep by the looks of things, but he, is, he has gone for it. It does give him some armor, which is always going to help him out against Life Sealer and TA, but for now, Tongfu looking like they could be in a good position. Veronica's finished the BKB of his own, so 
a lot of durability here. Super needs to be careful in the bottom lane. If Veronica comes in, gets a right click off with the track. The track comes first though. And that's gonna help Super actually blink away. Yeah, and Super's not going uh MKB. He has a Crystalis, which is by far the most efficient damage item on TA. Uh Data List is so much damage, it's much better than a Desolator actually, if you didn't know that. Yeah. But, it's going to be baking, uh, on, baking on those money crits as well, but when you get them, it's it's pretty big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And ROTK's finished the BKB food. of his own. I feel DK's still getting a lot of big items up, like ROTK, Leshrac with a BKB, you've got a Ghost Scepter on MMY. It's not... I mean, Tong Fu, they're, they're still well in this just because of their strong team fight, but by no means a DK behind. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, but Tong Fu has... They're in a much better position, yep. much, much better position than they were. And you can see it in their play, like their map movement, their map control is also better. See, look at all the wards they placed aggressively on the map. For the past 15 minutes, 20 minutes I'd even say, they didn't have any wards like this up because they couldn't even go out that far. But now they're out this far. How's, look how far How is out. Before he was afraid at his tier 1 tower in the mid, and by tier 1 I mean tier 3. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh how things have changed, and uh, yeah, they've got wards up, bottom lane, bottom river, top river, mid lane, it's just complete map control for them now, so DK maybe going to have to look for a smoke gank, maybe even await the next Roshan respawn, which is coming soon, so that'll be Aegis and Cheese, and I think Tongfu will still find it hard to contest Roshan, being on that Radiant side, and they still have to play somewhat fearful of those big smoke ganks, and it, it, I think it, it gives DK a pretty easy uncontested Roshan if they play it smart. Yeah. For sure. Uh, but that being said, I don't think an Aegis is a game changer. Or yep. Aegis and Cheese for DK. Um, if one of them dies, they're both melee heroes. I mean, uh, Linnea, Templar Assassin, can blink away. If, worse, if best case scenario, she can blink away after the Aegis. But it's pretty unlikely that she's still not going to die. If she blinks away, yeah. and I don't think she's going to blink off against this team if she's isolated. So, uh, yeah, if either of them are left alone, they're pretty much virtually worthless because they're just going to get stunned, slowed, etc. There's so many stuns on Tongfu, and Mu, he's 300 gold off his Shiva, so he's he's practically impossible to kill, I'd say. Oh, and that's right now. it's gonna it's gonna help out his whole t his team as a whole. You've got even how with this Heaven's Halberd is gonna be hard to kill. He's looking at similar uh, 1900 HP. He's got a ton of armor. He's got evasion. So I think DK I mean, they are, pff, Assault Crest is coming on the life sealer, but they just haven't got the damage. They maybe maybe he needs an MKB, but Templar Assassin doesn't have the Daedalus up yet. The the DPS just isn't quite there to match up with Tong Fu's item progression. The mech from Enigma is really helping deal with deal with the the, the, the constant push, the constant team fights as well. And DK, I, I don't know. They like you say, they they're in a bit of trouble possibly, and Tong Fu in a much better position now. Yeah, I've seen this situation actually occur quite a bit um, from mini games. I've been watching a lot of Dota lately, and uh, I've seen this situation come up a lot when. TA plus another melee hero is picked. Melee carry specifically is picked uh, in unison with it. Uh, there are a lot of problems with like pushing into the base and just um, getting kited in general. For example, I saw Complexity against Empire the other night, and they had a TA and a CK as their carries. Yep. And they were up by 25 kills at least against Empire, but they couldn't really do much with it because they had the double melee carry going on. And that's a problem with a lot of teams picking nowadays with TA. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of the Chinese teams will always have those heroes that can break through base. That's why they've been seeing a lot of Dragon Knight. But it's it's deep. Tong Fu who took the Dragon Knight here first. But life still for burning. I don't know. It's it, like it's really the ma main problem you mentioned. They just can't go high ground. They can't push into Tong Fu. And this Death Prophet pick, a hero, I it's never really been used much as of late in the Chinese scene. A couple of times it's been. It's it's gone through phases. I feel with the European teams, where for a week or two, maybe it'll suddenly be like a, a top play. three pick, but then it'll just get forgotten for ages. Like the last couple of months, I have not seen Death Prophet at all. Mm -hmm. And like Nix is a hero that needs to kill a, another hero within rage duration, and Burning can't do that to any hero besides Sanshang or Veronica right now. 
And those guys won't get out of position to do that. And Veronica has a BKB, so no chance of that. He can't kill any hero on Sentinel with within range duration, and that is a big problem for Nyx, because that's something you're relying on when you pick the hero. And BKB's all over. Enigma does, Long GD does decide to pick up a BKB, so guaranteed full duration black hole, basically. Even if you only want to use it on one or two heroes, don't have to worry about catching Bliss Track and having that stun come in. So if he finds the life of the Templar Assassin, finds just a couple heroes, he can go in and set up that fight for his team. They just have to have the follow-up damage. DK needs this level 16. I, I feel once Tongfu get DK level 16, and he's going to have another big item up soon. It looks like he just bought a Hyperstone, so we're going to see an Assault Crest coming soon. Level 16 DK, I think Tongfu are actually in a much better position then. Yeah. I think DK made a mistake with uh, their Cheese and Aegis choice as well. I think they should have put the Aegis on Super as he's much, much more fragile and uh, gave the Cheese to Burning. When Burning has Armlet activated, he has 2400 health, so it's quite a bit. And he can just live longer with Infest in general. So I think Aegis would be much more suited on Super. Yep, and now Mu the mid lane. This is, I mean, it just really goes to show how things have changed. Mu is just playing so aggressive in this mid lane. There's even a ward that spots him out, spots where he is, whether he has backup. But DK are just, they know they can't kill him. There's nothing they can do. Hasn't picked up any more Bloodstone shards. That's, I don't think there's been any kills since that last big clash in the bottom lane, which was some time ago. But it's, it seems that DK decide they can't push. They'd use it. They've actually, since that last fight, managed to get further and further ahead in terms of their gold lead, which has just come from taking Roshan, out, out farming Tong Fu slightly, but even with this out farm happening, I, they, they, their late game hero composition, I just don't think it matches up well against Tong Fu. Mm -hmm. How is desperately searching for creeps? He needs this level 16 <laughs> and he's so close. Such a game changer. Well, wh where did DK go? Do they look for a smoke gank? Are they just content to keep on farming, get the Daedalus on super, get Lifestealer maybe in Abyssal Blade, just get those really luxury items up, or do they look? Do they need to take a fight soon if they want to win this? Well, they're looking to take a fight as soon as possible, but they've realized that their inability to lock heroes down is a huge problem. This is why we see an ultimate orb coming out on the Venomancer, and we see an ultimate orb coming out on the Leshrac as well. They both are gearing towards cheap sticks, but the pace of this game has completely changed. Tong Fu can actually pressure this tower now, this tier 2, so I don't think either of these heroes are going to be finishing their cheap sticks unless they win a fight, and I, I think Tong Fu is in a much stronger position right now. Yeah, Tong Fu going to drop with 7 wards here, it looks like this tier 2 tower should drop. Tong Fu's how, this is how you can push down towers with these range power. Long D goes in, BKB black hole, it only catches the undying by the looks of things. Not the rest, no, Burning's in there as well, life's the caught now. Can oh. they finish off Burning? Huge Death Prophet ultimate! They need to deal with this Death Prophet, but they can't move, just sitting at the back, dishing out damage. Through Aegis on Burning, oh, this is going to be the one saving grace for DK, he's going to be back, he's going to go and how can they stun Burning? They need to stun him soon. Tong Fu, how though, he's still alive, he needs to stun Burning soon, he's bashed to pieces. Tong Fu! They get dealt with this. Aegis and Cheese was the deciding factor. They somehow take that fight. Yeah, I... it was. That was a ballsy fight for Tong Fu to take. Rush the I mean... black hole a bit, maybe? I, I don't know. Yeah, the black hole was also missed time. The DP had a huge silence, which actually did really well for Tong Fu. He hit four man silence on the people in the black hole. But um, overall, it was. It's pretty. I don't want to say, I, I just want to stay overconfident that Tong Fu t took that fight at their tier 2 while they had the Cheese and Aegis up. I mean, the Aegis wasn't that far from expiring, I don't think. But uh, the Death Prophet didn't ultimate before Yulzing herself, which was a big mistake on her part, I think. Because if she had that ultimate off the 2.5 seconds she was in the air, I think she could have possibly saved uh, a couple of her teammates by dealing the the required damage that was needed to kill the DK heroes. They were so low. Some of those heroes were so low. And uh, I think if the, she had the ghost out for 2.5 more seconds that she was in the air for, uh, they would definitely would have died. My gratitude. Oh, and a big fight one like that. It's going to mention those ships except for Venomancer Lush Track. ROTK is very close to his now. He's already up to 2.5k gold. 357, yeah. just sitting on 1k gold. But this is your 5 position. This is your hard support Venomancer practically. And with with 1k gold already, if this game goes long enough, which it looks like it, it could well do, because Tong Fu have such a great ability to defend, these sheep sticks are quite likely to come into play. Oh, they've gone, they found ROTK, Venomance is there, but there's nothing he can do to help out ROTK. ROTK can't get off his BKB, does get chained down, Dirge gonna drop the tombstone, they're gonna focus the tombstone, I think they should just go for these heroes, offensive Yule Star, 
Undying going to be the next to drop if he can't keep himself alive with this Ghost Scepter. Sheep down on MMY. Can they get three out of this? Here comes Super with Burning. Burning's inside Super. Pops out. Takes out the Death Prophet right off the bat. And that is the one big hero they needed to kill. They do kill. And with Death Prophet down, I don't think Tong Fu have the required DPS to win a fight. Great focus fire there. And Death Prophet pays for using that Yule Scepter offensively. Didn't have it to keep himself alive. Yeah, I think they had to kill with those Yule Scepter too, sadly. Well, now with the, with DK as well as Death Prophet. Death Prophet respawning very fast thanks to the Bloodstone, but still 10 seconds. And with, with that 10 seconds there, DK trying to push down this mid lane. Buyback for Dragon Knight. Tongfu, they're actually all alive very soon. No Death Prophet ultimate for about a minute, but I think DK still can't push here. They don't have the Aegis and Cheese anymore. They've got to play a lot safer. Tongfu seems to be chasing right now. Yeah, they're really going all in for this. Veronica at least is, but it looks like the rest of the team just can't really keep up. Black Hole's, Black Hole's back online for Long DD, so I think oh, Tongfu boy. maybe look for a fight. Oh man, I just noticed something that that's a real big game changer. Alright, so last fight, uh, Kung Fu Panda, who's ROTK, I just don't know his name that well. Alright, so ROTK, he died, and then his Bloodstone pretty much instant respawned him. It was like 15 seconds, yep. 10 seconds. But anyways, that fight lasted a long time, and he thought he could get back in the fight if he bought bots and bought it in, so he's that much further away from his sheep stick. Oh. Yeah. And... Well, but, it's I mean, further burning, away from his sheep stick, but, I mean, to Dongfu lose that fight, well, at least they, they lose two of their key heroes, they force a DK buyback, so... He's still a long way from the sheep stick, but I think DK have the time to wait for it. They have the time to... they can take the next Roshan, I imagine, much like they did... They can get... this is a fourth Roshan, and so far Tongfu hasn't found the ability to contest a single one of them. Yeah, and Burning also picked up his Abyssal Blade, which is huge. A lot more damage, plus the, uh... Guaranteed stun is going to be huge at focusing down Mu. And Mu. Mu's suddenly looking a lot more killable with how the last few fights have gone. He's been picked up this Ghost Scepter, almost forced into it, and I I don't know. It's it's with the, even with the Shiva's guard up, he needs more survivability to some extent. It seems. Mm -hmm. He does, and the Ghost Scepter was a good pickup. I was expecting it. Yep, and we, the problem is now, he's got the Tranquil Boots there, maybe he's going to try upgrade those to some Boots of Travel, fill the TP scroll with something else, but he, he's pretty much fill, filled out his item slots with these sort of mid-price, cost-effective items in the Yule Scepter, the Ghost Scepter, he's going to have to start upgrading some of them soon. How needs his Assault Crest, he's getting close to it, and I think when the Assault Crest is up, Tong Fu uh, and, uh, can maybe have a much better fight. As long as as long as they're fighting a 5-on-5 five five with an Assault Crest, and there's no Aegis and Cheese, I think Tong Fu can win these fights, but right now, it looks like DK just aren't going to take a fight on e equal terms. They're always going to look to have Cheese or Aegis, they're always going to look to have buybacks with the boots to travel on less track. They're just using all these things, this gold advantage, to make sure that they're fighting the on their own terms. Mm -hmm. And DK is suddenly in a position where they're much Radiance more in control than they were previously. Burning at bottom lane. He's going to try Braid TP out. Is there Enigma Black Hole? No, Enigma's not one of the TPs. The one thing that would have prevented that, but Burning, he pushes, presses this bottom tower. It's going to get denied, I imagine, but either way, that's map control loss for Tom Kroon. I think the fact that it gets denied doesn't really bother DK at this point in the game. No, definitely not. It's only a loss of 100, 150 gold. So they're just waiting on Roshan right now. DK is it's up in five seconds. So, and yeah, I, I don't think Tongfu. It looks like they're kind of oh, lurking it. around. They they've timed this. They want to contest this. They've got the Enigma there ready uh, to make sure they have the black hole. But it's so hard to do anything which to surprise and get DK when DK had this Venomat. So the Playboard's giving such great vision. They've got track down. Uh, QQQ does get tracked up, but the Surf Mords are going to be there. The only way I think Tong Fu can, can take this is with a smoke. They need to use that to get past the Surf Mords, but ROTK's at top lane. He's pressuring top lane, applying Roche. pressure all over the map, and they, they can't. Roche, Roshan goes to DK. Aegis on Burning. Cheese on Venomancer probably gets passed maybe to, to someone else. So I don't think Venomancer wants to keep that. Maybe to the Lashrak, and... Well, this is going to get really hard to defend for Tongfu when there's Aegis and Cheese, uh, as well as I mean buybacks on heroes like Lashrak. He's got boots of travel. They've got they've just a big, big item difference now between the two teams. I feel. Yeah, and we see they are DK isn't going to do anything until uh, ROTK gets a sheep stick. He's only 400 gold off, so 
<laughs> they're just waiting it out. Yeah. At that point, I think uh, Tongfu is definitely uh, far behind. DK is in a much better position. Well, items like the the Yule Scepter, the Ghost Scepter, just can't be used defensively if you're going to get sheeped up and yeah. jumped on. So it makes it a yeah, lot harder this, here. This Bounty Hunter also hasn't really progressed in items at all for the past 20 minutes. He got his BKB at like 25-ish, I think it was. But then he built a Vlad as his next item. Now he's 2.4k. But overall, he can't really do that much, especially against DK's heroes. They have a Nyx, they have a Templar Assassin, they have the Tombstone, they have a West Track, which means that he can pretty much be focused down any time me if he's melee range. So even if he had like maxed items, it would be difficult unless it was an advantageous situation. Yep, and here we go. Less track has got his sheep stick. How's how's uh, pressuring the top lane for Tongfu? I feel they just they they want to keep the lanes pushed out. They want to stall so they can get those next those next items up, or at least b have gold for buybacks. Make it so that if they're defending, they've got buybacks. Enigma's trying to build a sheep stick, and well, it's it's going to be tough for them. DK is just kind of starving them out, out farming them, and maybe they're not even ready to push now. QQQ with Venomancer is about 500 gold away from a Sheepstick of his own, so it's mm -hmm. it's going to be really scary when the support Venomancer can get a Sheepstick as well. Yeah. And Tongfu, do they... I mean, they're, they're grouping up now, which I feel they have to do, but do they look to get aggressive, go for a smoke gank, try take a team fight somewhere, or do they just have to keep on farming on their side of the map? Well, DK is going to get aggressive within, let's see here, three minutes because Aegis is going to expire. That's that's a guarantee. They'll definitely get aggressive. Um, Burning has to pick up an item. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's going to be Majolnir. So he has Majolnir. Majolnir. Oh God. <laughs> don't even don't even try. <laughs> I, I tried to do like the actual pronunciation. Oh, no, not never again. It's I've heard Majolnir. I've heard like six or seven different different pronunciations, yeah. but. Apparently it's like some Swedish or Latin word, which I don't even know. But DK, yeah, I, they've got both Templar Assassin and Life Sealer just maxed out at this point. Life Sealer's got full inventory. So same goes for the Templar Assassin, practically Manta style. I mean, he's got that gem filling up one of those item slots, but he's got Manta style, Daedalus BKB. That's kind of his core there. And Tongfu just don't have the same on heroes like, like how his his DK just a bit under farm. Death Prophet's there, but Death Prophet alone just isn't going to be enough, I feel, to win these fights. Yeah, and they kind of had like this mid-game, like superior team Tongfu did, like where they could take fights. But in the late late game, like Death Prophet's ultimate doesn't do that much damage to extremely farmed heroes such as like Super and Burning and ROTK and even the support Venomancer with 1900 health. <laughs> so yep. like Death Prophet's ultimate effectiveness is down so much. For Tong Fu, I feel they need a massive DK. DK needs like Daedalus, Satanic, yeah. all these big items. They need the re Refresher probably on long DD. He's going for a Sheepstick now, but I feel Black Hole is going to be the one way they can win these late-game team fights. They're looking for a pick-off in the enemy jungle here. They've smoked up, but well, DK, they're not having it. They're, they're grouping up at their own mid-tower, waiting for something to be coming their way. They, they know Tong Fu are all missing from the map, probably expecting something along these lines. Mm-hmm. Ooh, here we go. It's going to be Burning. They run into Burning. He's going to spot it all out. He's got this Aegis, though, so probably not the best target for Tonkfu to run into. Super goes immediately blinking, and he pops a BKB. Can they deal with Moo? Can they prevent him from doing all this damage? Long Didi has got the not the best Slack hole by the looks of things, and he's going to go down. Long Didi doesn't get the damage done. And, oh, no, the Aegis now. Burning's come back. How drops as well. Triple kill. 4DK. They drop one by one. Death Prophet, the only one still alive. TP towards the bottom lane. Terrible engagement coming from Tong Fu. Oh man, gods. Long DD is not Jones. happy right now. He cancelled his black hole before even a second of it got off. Oh man. And uh, it was going to be a nice black hole too. I saw it for a brief split second. And he would have hit at least three heroes if he kept it channeling. And he realizes that. My eyesight but, failed me. I'm like, wait, I, I clicked Enigma. I'm like, wait, Black Hole's on cooldown. I didn't even see it. I'm like, what happened? Yeah, I, I was actually clicked on Enigma. That's why I saw it. I, I saw like the brief intermission. And when it's this late in the game, if you win a team fight, wipe them and they don't have buyout. Rax just get killed so fast. Burning does so much damage. Burning super hit. Hey, the both of them are already up to 6k gold. They can get their next item up if they want, or whatever that may be. And Tongfu.
It looks like this is going to be it. They're going to drop this game number two. They're, they're going to lose. Get the Mega Creeps here, DK. And DK, well, it was all came down to that late game of Nick play. And DK just a bit more clutch there. Finding the, the life steal up with the Aegis wasn't the target they were looking for. And now Tong Fu, all they can do is just run away, pop BKBs and run. Moo even. Just not as unkillable as he once was. Tong Fu, I feel they had their moment to shine in the mid game, but they just took it too late. Yeah, they just. They without a doubt had their moment to shine. Not this late. Well, Tong Fu, they drop game number two. They lose this WCG Chinese qualifiers by the looks of things. Well, they haven't strong. called GG yet, but I, I don't yeah, see them coming back to Mega, mega Creeps. Yeah, WCG, this yes. is the Chinese qualifier. There's two teams from China who apparently get to play because the Chinese are the host of the tournament, so there'll be IG as well as DK representing China, and IG will also battle DK on Monday to see who gets the number one team from China. Yeah, it kind of sucks for LGD that they had to play IG first round. Yeah. Well, it was, it was either they either get what, they either get LGD or DK. Um, maybe yeah. it sucks that it was the first round they didn't even get to do in the semifinals. But either way, they wouldn't have to get through one of those two teams in the semifinals. So it was it was an unlucky bracket nonetheless. But I don't know. Yeah. LGD haven't looked know. As, as as fly lately. I mean, they've really been somewhat. I don't know. They, their fluidity as a team just is. They're not looking as convincing when when they play. I know LGD In is making their debut for oh, yeah. uh, It's Goes to Asia Monthly Madness. Are you casting that? I'm not casting that. I think that's LD and Luminous doing most of the cast of that tournament. But that'll be. I think a lot of people are waiting to see how they will do. Especially, I, I don't know who yeah. their first match is against, but that's really kind of the big thing coming out from the Dota 2 scene in the next month or two. There's a couple big LAN events with DreamHack Winter in two weeks. Uh, you've got like stuff like SMM coming up as well, but it's watching LGD Int is going to be the next exciting thing for Dota yeah. fans. I personally can't wait. Uh, I've been, ke I've kept in contact with Brax quite well, and uh, he's told me about a lot that's going on in China and the metagame and stuff like yeah. that. So it's going to be really interesting. And he says they have really, they're doing quite well, and they have a good record against Chinese teams. Yeah, it's. It's it's hard to always know until you get tested in those big tournaments. But I mean, oh like, yeah, for sure. I think mm -hmm. I think a lot. I mean, most teams probably thought think they can they have what it takes as far as individual skills go. It's just whether or not they can come together. It's interesting that that Misery is actually going to be switching to that four position on support. They roll that most people won't be familiar with him playing, but I think it works for them. I, I think Misery is a player who can really adapt to that role as well. Yeah, they say Misery is adapting quite well to it. Uh, they say like I've heard comments. That like it, it, he likes it a lot, and he feels like uh, the team feels like it's Misery's best role. So yeah. Well, as far as this game goes, it looks like Tongfu have not called GG. So <laughs> apparently, we need to keep on casting this game. Tongfu, um, I I don't know. I don't think they can come back from Mega Creeps. They they just don't no. have the heroes, don't have the items, don't have anything. Well, at they're all. gonna damn well try, guys. Yeah. They're gonna damn well try. BKB up and burning. You've got. Linnea with a butterfly coming out by the looks of things in just a second. They're, they're going to damn well try, and there's no cheese, no Aegis for about one minute. <laughs> okay, so DK can just sit back, wait for cheese and Aegis if they so choose. I don't think they really That's need so to. That's so cowardly. But, uh, yeah, it, it is cowardly, but this is this is Chinese Dota, remember? <laughs> uh, I don't know. They've got. I mean, they've really? just got all the rod, rod of Atos. When was the last time you saw a rod of Atos in a competitive game? It's up on QQQ. Uh, never? <laughs> never? <laughs> well, here we, here we go. There's, there's first for everything. This is not Ice only... Frog is making a push for it, though. I really... I, I really is. I like the new range on it. I just feel it's too expensive as an item. Slows are good, like, in the laning stage early on, but once you get to mid-game, you need utility and survivability items. Like, you're, you're seeing your Yule Scepter, your Four Staffs, um, your blink daggers. Rod of Athos just doesn't fit. It's a slow. Like, what does a slow actually accomplish in a team fight? Not really much at all. Yeah, it's just a slow. And some elephants. And some mana, I guess. But, yeah. I mean, mana isn't that important for the heroes that are going to buy it because, yeah. like, they're looking at dying in the duration of their spell casting, you know? It's it's too expensive for support heroes to legitimately buy it. And for, I feel 4 staff is just a better item for support heroes than getting the Rod of Atos because of the price, because of the components and stuff. And I, I guess some heroes like maybe Obsidian Destroyer you could justify the Rod of Atos on. There's like a couple heroes that maybe it's viable on, but there's just so many it just doesn't work on it at all.
Yeah, and DK is taking this super seriously still. A testament to how they treat the game. He sold his armlet to pick up the ages on Nix. They aren't taking chances. No way, says Burning. No way. <laughs> Straight for the throne, maybe. No, Tongfu are just sitting there waiting. They've got a relic on DK. This is going to be a divine rapier. That's, that's going to be the one item which, well, I don't know if it gives him a chance, but it, it'll help. It'll help stall for longer and longer. Dragonite's he's still a long way away. He hasn't even got the divine rapier yet, so he's got to keep on farming that up. And they're still smoke. They're still just waiting. They may just want to go right. They're getting pinged out. Tongfu know it's coming. They're ready for it. I don't know how. There's no sentries or dust is there. Templar assassin has the nakes inside. Looking for those bombs. It's going to be how that they sheep up. They don't actually go in on how. They're looking for Veronica instead. Veronica pops a Manta style, and here we go. DK, can they take this last game winning fight? It looks like DK are just going for the towers. Burning focus down once you put how long did he? Big whoa. black hole. It took his time. Super right clicks him down, though. And I think Super just too much farm here. Not to mention Burning. Burning's not even fighting. He's just taking down towers. <laughs> Burning does not care about all this when shenanigans. RTK, like was dying. I was like, whoa, like, is this actually happening? Like, is he gonna yeah. die right now? And Not then I was like, no. No. Well, Al, Al Venomanza, who has 14k net worth, he does die. But that's a, a very small win for Tong Fu. The bigger win goes DK's way. They take game two. They're gonna be going to the WCG Grand Finals. I, I don't know what city that's in. I think it's in Shanghai, maybe? I think I'm lying, but I don't know where that is. But that's in the first weekend of December, I want to say. Um, and they'll be joined by IG. They'll also verse IG on Monday to find out who's going to be that top seed. So IG versus DK. I thought we we're going to have to wait for like the G1 League Grand Finals or something to see this matchup, but we're going to get to see it yeah. nice and early. That'll be that'll be really exciting. I feel. Yeah. Hmm. Who's your pick, IG or DK, as far as like the team, the Chinese team in the, with the current strongest form and who's performing the best? I gotta go with IG. I hate to say it, but like I, I like to root for the underdog. DK is playing well, but I don't think they're playing well enough yet to take on IG. IG is just looking so strong. They are using a lot more heroes, a lot more strategies. They aren't afraid of anything. They aren't afraid of their ex execution, and they also have like the Navi aura, the international aura. Like the team that won the international looks unbeatable for the next five months. Yeah. You know. did, did you catch the series against against Orange? Because that was kind of really interesting how Orange just outplayed them so badly in the laning stage and with, as far as laning and just individual skill. But then IG just turned, like, they played from behind so perfectly. And they that was when I really thought, like, this is the best team in the world by a long shot. Because even when they have yeah. a terrible early game, they still somehow turn it around. Yeah, I miss those games, unfortunately. Yeah, they, they, it was like a 10k gold lead or something going the way of Orange and... DK just sat back and waited for whatever openings they could find. But IG versus DK, that'll be Monday. Thanks for uh, for joining me for this cast. For those of you guys wondering, Paint at Gold yeah, it was, a pleasure. was was the uh, co cast. You, you're Paint Paint Dota on Twitter. You can find him. Yeah, Paint Dota. Mm -hmm. All right, follow him. And what about you? Like upcoming teams now that uh, Quantic is is not so much a thing anymore. Are you going to be looking to keep keep forming a new team, keep playing competitively, or what's on the horizon for you? Um, right now, I I mean. I have some offers, and I have some other offers. So, right now, I have I'm playing on off a of laptop. So playing, I don't really want to play until I get my new computer up because 15 FPS isn't that enjoyable. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be. I don't know. I'm just taking a breather, and then I'm gonna decide probably in a in a bit in a bit. Right now, I'm just casting, enjoying games, enjoying Dota, freeing my mind of Dota, like. Dota is a stress-heavy game, man. Yeah. Like, and I played last year pretty much without stopping all the time. Waking up at like 9 a.m. for European tournaments. You know all about that. You're Australian. <laughs> Waking up at four in the yeah. morning, playing till about eight in the yeah. morning. I haven't had to endure that, but I've I've been a part of it with the N9 guys somewhat. But hey, that sounds all. I think it's I think it's worth just getting back into that state state where you just enjoy Dota as a game. Like you, you play it for competitive yeah. for too long, and then suddenly you're like, why? Like what, what's keeping me still playing? Like you just start enjoying the game less, so you have to really. I, th I think that's what Navi do. It's so amazing that like Havos just goes and takes a holiday, just says, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna go go on holidays. My team can play online tournaments without me for a while." Because I think that's how they stay on top is that they can actually separate Dota and real life really well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he gets some flames for like not showing up for an online game, but like I think it's perfectly reasonable that you're not expected to be playing every match week in, week out. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's difficult. Like, there's so many games, and there's so much you could be playing, and yeah, it's just really time consuming. It's really life consuming. Dota is. Yeah, it's very life consuming. All right, this is getting this is getting too deep for me. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna say goodbye, good night to everyone. Thanks, Paint Paint for casting with me. I'm gonna be playing some ads yeah. now just to support the stream and everything. And any any last shout outs, man? Uh, shout out to Blitz. Yeah, follow him on Blitz. Uh, Blitz Twitter, Blitz Dota, Blitz Dota. Let's do it. Is Blitz um, streaming at the moment? I I saw he was streaming earlier when I I think I started. But no, I he's, he's not streaming is. in the moment. I'd also like to give a shout out to Brax from LGD Int. I'm looking forward to their games in It's Gosu Asia Monthly Madness, which starts the 17th, 18th, 19th. It's a three day weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I believe. You guys should check it out because I'm super stoked to see LGD Int, who is primarily European and North American. Living in China, play. And I'm looking forward to see their progress. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Goodbye, gods. All right. See you later, man. Thanks. All right, guys. That does it for today. I'm going to be having a ad break now um, just to conclude the cast. I'll be playing a rebroadcast later on of those matches because there were some pretty pretty exciting cool picks cool play and cool teams so i'll be playing a rebroadcast but thanks everyone for tuning in please hang around watch some ads turn off your ad blockers if you want if you don't want to you can just hang around listening to music i'll be chatting away but guys we'll be back soon i'll be also casting zero vs next kz apparently which is in 15 minutes time i don't know maybe in a couple hours so i'm casting the ghostly league later on so be sure to tune in for the ghostly league match between zero and next kz until then guys i'll be playing a few ads thanks everyone for tuning in good night